What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Walkout Network. It's your man, Ant Walker, here with another edition of Unleash, the weekly panel discussion show. Before we begin, remember to like, subscribe, share, tell a friend to tell a friend, tell that friend to tell 10 more friends. So, of course, we have a fantastic panel. You've seen this man on the show before. It's been quite some time since we had him on. Happy to welcome back uh, for my MMA news, MMA news. Uh, also, a part-timer at SureDog as well, Ed Carver Hall. Ed, how you doing today? Fantastic. How you doing? Can't complain, brother. Can't complain at all. Great, great to have you back. And of course, uh, the jack of all trades who has mastered them all, the senior editor of Sherdog.com, my man, Ben Duffy. Ben, what's going on? Hey, I'm doing really well. We missed you last week. We powered through it as best we could, but it's good to have you back in the captain's chair. And uh, we got some stuff to talk about, don't we? Oh, yes, yes, we do. And of course, every week the panel is anchored by the man with the stats, the facts, the figures and the numbers. He is the associate editor of Sherlock.com. And my good friend, Jay Petru. Jay, what's going on? Well, I echo Ben's sentiments exactly. I mean, I, I it's much as I enjoyed hosting. It's it's a nice a nice change of pace for a moment. But I'm, I'm really glad to have you back, partner. Um, I suppose we'll go off with the stat of the week. It's a pretty no brainer. I thought about this as a backup stat of the week so i'll just give it as a bonus first this was uh this past espn card was joe martinez's 50th show with the ufc 50 shows but the big stat of the week of course is from the headliner ufc on espn 23 harry prochaska hit a spinning back elbow it is the third in ufc history duffy obviously knows them because well you know he knows the, the the sheet that i have can you guys name the other two spinning back elbow knockouts the ufc has had um man i, I i've got the image Putting of somebody the spot here i got the image of somebody yeah. just collapsing yeah your rodriguez has got to be one of them right that was a that no, was, that was an up elbow. elbow yeah oh oh you mean like it has, has to be through spinning this I can, way. <laughs> see i can think of john jones nailing somebody with one but it wasn't a knock he dropped Stephen bonner with it but he didn't finish him yeah with it didn't not yeah it didn't knock him out um damn i can think of all these spinning back fists but it's all right elbow. i won't i won't, I won't drag right. out the broadcast any longer uh dung young kim stun gum uh knocked out john hathaway back when that was a headliner in in singapore philippines back when john there. hathaway was like a top prospect i remember what happened that. there yeah and uh ricardo ramos uh hit one on Eamon sahabi the other sahabi um, oh, right. in 2017 and everybody went nuts because that was a big upset for some reason anyway here, Prochaska, a light heavyweight, hit a spinning knockout strike. Awesome. Very, very, very. Um, and and that was such an incredibly exciting and, and just highly action-packed, tense main event. Um, but let's let's use this for our swing or miss portion here. Uh, Yuri is now going to wait for the winner of Jan Blakovic and Glover Teixeira to fight for the UFC's light heavyweight title. Ed, you swinging or missing on that one? I, I know I asked this the last time, and I got to ask again. If I like it, is that's a swing, right? Uh, I forget, I yes, forget yes, 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 yeah. because yeah, we, we have that <laughs> ambiguous language there, but yes. Yeah, so, so I mean, I, I like I like it. I, I hope he can wait, and uh, I mean, you know, I hope he gets, you know, the winner of that, just because, I mean, why not? You know, after, after a showing like that, Against a former title challenger, why not? Why not? I'm all for it. Uh, gentlemen, are you in agreement? Uh, is this is this a swing for you? Yuri's going to wait for his title shot. I think so. I I, I think he is. I'm I'm swinging on this one. They, I mean, they more or less made it out like he was the presumptive challenger for whoever comes out of that. And if he's smart, he'll just kind of wait in the wings because it might be his title shot if <clears throat> if something happens to Teixeira. Ooh, that's a you know, he point. might be fighting forward in September. So there's just the division is in a place right now. It would be great if the division were healthy enough that he needed one more fight to be a title eliminator. But at this point, he's come in, you know, dragging a belt from another high level promotion behind him. And he didn't have an Eddie Alvarez or Anthony Pettis or Shogun Hua moment. I mean, he blasted a top 10 and now a top five guy back to back in his first two appearances and he's ready like what 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 are we waiting for i mean he's younger than uh than reyes and has twice as many fights like there, there's no jitters there's there's no adjustment mm. he didn't have to get used to the cage he's ready to go i don't know if i favor him but he doesn't need any more seasoning doesn't need to prove anything else yeah 
I have to agree with that. Jay, what, what do you think? It, well, it's interesting. Something that Duffy said is that the jitters of the cage, because this is his second cage fight in who knows how long. I can't I can't remember because he was in Ryzen for such a long time. Mm -hmm. uh, Ryzen, of course, has. I think he was in an organization that had an event called Cage Fight. So I believe that would have been his last appearance in a cage. But I, it's been, you know, it's been three, four years or so when he when it's been, uh, you know, since he'd been in the cage. I came into this thinking I was going to miss because I thought you got the hot hand. Um, you, you're, you, would you wait four months plus three more, maybe at best? Uh, you know, that's a seven seven month shelf time. Uh, but then I thought the last time he fought was in July. So this isn't a guy who's chomping at the bit to go like a Giga Chikadze who's going, I'm going to fight. I'm fighting next weekend. I'm fighting. Let's do it. You know, or uh, Kevin Holland or something. This isn't a guy who wants to burn up his goodwill that he's had. I mean, it's 10 knockouts in a row for here, Prochaska, and he has not been fighting tomato cans across the way. I mean, some of them are lesser names, but they're still former UFC, former Bellator talents. And he mm -hmm. has been just, just doing mean things to them. And, and he answers some interesting questions that I had coming to this fight in that we know he's a dangerous fighter who leaves his hands down. So he's a dangerous, you know, you almost want to think of him as a glass cannon. I mean, all of his losses are by stoppage two in the first round. Uh, but he, you know, he's almost a chin first. I'm going to still beat you to the punch kind of guy. And that's a tough situation to be in with a, a division like light heavyweight. Um, and every, where every guy you could fight up at the top of the echelon of the division could beat you. But the only guy ahead of him in the rankings, other than Teixeira and Blahovic, is Alexander Rakic. And I don't want to burn a contender fight. I mean, I, I feel like uh, Yuri's done more than Rakic to deserve to leapfrog him there. Um, overall, coming all the way back to the beginning, I'm going to swing and say he waits. Uh, if... Blahovich does what he sounds like he wants to do, he'll want to fight at the end of the year if he beats Glover. And that could work just fine. Um, but if Glover takes it uh, and then he retires, like some people are speculating, things get crazy. So yeah, I think Neary's going to, his next fight will be for a title in some fashion. Yeah, I, I have to agree with that as well. I mean, the, the Alexander uh, raking situation shows exactly like that's the only other fight that's left for him that makes any sense. And it just doesn't make sense for the UFC. So it's a fight that really shouldn't happen unless unless there's been a, a clearer movement on the title involving one of those two men. Um, presumably, um, say say Yuri ends up beating the winner of Blagovic and, and Teixeira, and he gets the belt, then have a have a fight against Ray Kick because you're not burning a contender. Right. So th that's that's really the direction I think they should move in, uh, especially with despite the fact we've have more talent at light heavyweight, it's still really not um, a, a very dense division. So it's it's still yeah. sort of sorting itself out, and, and the exit of John Jones has kind of made it seem a little more enticing than it might really be. So uh, I'm I, I think that uh, Yuri would be smart to just chill and wait for that one. Can I ask you, let me ask you guys a question. Um, this was something I posed to Duffy really, really, really late after the fight card. Uh, and now that I have a clear head, I can kind of put my thoughts together. The winner of this weekend, I think, and I want you to see if you agree or disagree. The winner of overall winner of this weekend is John Jones. He does not have to worry about fighting Dominic Reyes. He has a potential sellable contender in front of him should he want to come back down and deal with it. Mm -hmm. Because Jan Blachowicz, he's got Polish power or something, but he is not a traditional draw that we, in any marketable pay-per-view kind of way, which is what the UFC cares about. And um, and he also has the Ngannou thing. So is was was Yuri winning almost beating Reyes almost the best thing for John Jones? Um, not necessarily because I think, I think Jones returning to 205 would be big news either way. Like if it was Reyes, like who wouldn't want to see that rematch, um, after their first fight, um, who wouldn't want to see John versus Jan with the similar names, uh, who wouldn't want to see, um, him and Ray kick like there, there are fresh matchups at 205 for Jones. So he's still 
retains whatever negotiating power he has going back to 205 and and i think he'd be favored against any of the aforementioned names um and of course the 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 um you know that that lost heavyweight thing like that that mystique of of john jones moving up to heavyweight uh is it should drive some some big dollars so i think he's good regardless Mm -hmm. i so i wouldn't necessarily say he's the biggest winner um because of that i would say maybe this adds to his legacy because i did see an interesting stat that i i hadn't really considered at all that um out of his last several fights the only person who has had a win after fighting john jones was anthony smith and and anthony smith certainly went through his tough times uh mm-hmm. afterward so i i think we can we can speak to like the destructive powers of john jones and how this man has seems to have like a lingering effect on the people he comes across that might be i th- i think the the thing that makes john jones a winner here but he just ruins you <laughs> yes yeah. like he just absolutely ruins you and then and and watching reyes in in that fight reyes looked good in a lot of spots he yeah. landed like he he landed with considerable authority yeah. um technically he looked on point like his his whole um his whole ability to back up and mm-hmm. still land a lot of power shots he was doing that on the money he was he was properly defending yeah. and throwing counters and stuff he looked great but it just wasn't good enough this time and jones seems to have done that to a lot of people that they're just never the same like mm-hmm. i can even think back as far as like like rashad evans was never yeah. the same yeah after yeah. the jones fight and he didn't necessarily take a lot of damage in that rampage jackson was never the same after the john jones fight shogun hua was never the same like we can go down the list of people who just were not quite themselves after they encountered jones Mm -hmm. and we can add dominic reyes to that list now with two uh two at bats and two failures and that loss was really bad too like if he was if he if john jones took something out of him you know like like you were saying i mean you know the the win against weidman is whatever but this this particular loss, I mean, I think when guys lose that bad, they just leave a piece of themselves in there too, so that they're, they're never going to be the same after them after they're you know in the future fights. So yeah, I agree with you. That's a really good point. I I, I would pose a, a, a thought that Dominic Reyes would have beaten most of the rest of the division had he been facing them that night. Yes. Like, like this, like just, he was on point. The only reason why he had to back up was because he was getting hit hard too. Like, I, I think he, he would have put a, there was one time where he had Yuri in a little trouble that against, if you would hit Glover with that <sighs> Glover would have been ice skates all over the cage. I, I just mm-hmm. like, I, it's, it's hard to say that, that I know people have been really ripping on Reyes and saying he's nothing now, man. I think Reyes would have beaten most of yeah. everybody else. And I, I, you know, it's funny if, if you listen to the commentary on that, because that, that's one of the I watched the two finishes twi- uh, more than twice, the, the co-main and the main event for from last Saturday. And if you listen to the commentary, because I was <laughs> when I had it playing again this morning, I was working. <laughs> so I was listening to it and working, but knowing what happened. But if you just without seeing it, you could hear the commentary sees Reyes winning that fight yeah. right up until he he loses. So it is what it is, man. So it's a tough yeah. business. I, I think um I think we we look back on something like this. It 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 continues to add to Jones's legacy in the sense of like like Michael Jordan's legacy almost where you're so great in those moments that other people's greatness is defined by how yeah. they almost beat you. Like Patrick Ewing is looked at and Patrick Ewing and that Knicks team almost beat the Bulls, so they were great like when your your greatness is defined by a loss that that's an upper echelon of competition that, at, that look, we don't see too often in mixed look martial at alexander arts. gustafson's first fight exactly that's, that's his career highlight it isn't destroying jimmy mano or any of the things like that it's that he pushed john jones to the limit yes exactly and that and that's, that's and yeah. that seems to be the that seems to be the defining characteristic yeah. of several of jones's opponents like uh, although i i think the decision was clear from my eyes but a lot of people think tiago santos won yeah that was the defining mm-hmm. moment of, of his career almost beating him um uh daniel cormier almost beating him or at least being competitive with taking him taking him down um, and everything yeah yeah. yeah yeah so so you have you have those those rare athletes and for Gustafson. 
I mean, he touched that twice. Like he almost beat Jones and almost beat uh, Daniel Cormier, and that's his legacy right there. So I, I, I do think that we're talking about rarefied air when we when we're talking about the light heavyweight division without Jones because it's just he just left such a he just left like a dis- just destruction, just scorched earth behind, and and we're we're seeing the, the the division sort of pick itself back up. All right, fellas, let's keep things pushing here. Uh, another uh, fantastic performance came courtesy of of Giga Chikaze. I'm sure I messed up that pronunciation, but you know y'all know how I get down. Um, he floored Cub Swanson with a, a very very well placed liver click. Just beautiful technique there. How far do you think this man can go in the featherweight division? Well, as incredible as that finish was, it didn't teach anything that we didn't already know. I mean, that was his sixth straight win in the UFC. We already knew he could outstrike fringe contender slash regular roster level uh, UFC featherweights. Like We are well aware of that at this point. The question on my mind is, how different is he from the guy that got choked out by Austin Springer on the Contender Series three years ago? Presumably he's better because at that point he was only three years into his MMA career after you know having been a kickboxer. He's now three more years into his career facing better competition. He's been at King's MMA that whole time. I assume he's gotten better on the ground, but we just flat out don't know yet. What I do know is we're probably going to find out next because – the UFC can't really match him against a non-ranked guy going forward. Like he needs a step up. He's like the opposite of, of Hamza Chimaev where, you know, they're trying to throw him in against a top three opponent for his third UFC fight. They've been <laughs> tapping the brakes with Chikadze probably because of that loss on the contender series, but he's earned a shot at a ranked borderline ranked guy. That is an area stuffed with good wrestlers. I mean, he's going to get tested, and we're going to find out. It's a bit of the the old Conor McGregor wait and see, where all of his detractors were like, oh, we'll wait until he fights a wrestler, and then when he killed a wrestler, well, wait until he fights a wrestler, you know, like on a full camp. And, you know, it was oh, well, it was all silliness, regardless of how you felt about the guy. He was a man of destiny in the division. I'm not saying that that's Giga Chikadze, but it, it's time to find out, and I think we're going to find out this summer. I mean, Giga was ranked going into this fight. For some reason, the UFC decided to rank both Giga and Cub right before this fight uh, because the UFC rankings are not promotional tools at all. This is exactly how it's supposed to work. Anyway, um, yeah, he was ranked so by the definition uh, and the power invested uh, in me by the state of, of Pennsylvania. It's mm-hmm. It's almost like... They can't. They can't match him down. They can't give him a short notice. They can't give him a a, a Jamie Krause Simmons kind of fighter who's a, a a late notice or newcomer. It just it's hard to to push that. And I I too understand why the UFC is hesitant to push Chikaze because of the beginning of his career. Like this is a guy who ran through Gladiator Challenge, and sure he smoked seven guys. In, in like no longer than 90 seconds for a win, but their combined record was three wins and 56 losses. So what, what you can't really gauge how he is, which mm. is so crazy how the UFC also has uh, the, the ability to point to his kickboxing credentials. And then he was a, uh, you know, he, I won't believe he was a champion, but he was a, a respected glory kickboxer and, and other organizations before then. Um, this is, Duffy's right. I didn't learn anything about Giga. He literally calls that kick his Giga kick, and he's been doing it for years. I've seen him drop guys with that liver kick plenty of times before, and he did it to perfection, and Cub didn't do the homework, or he got tagged. Whatever it was, he went down like you go down when your liver shuts off. Hmm. I don't care who wins in this fight that happens in two weeks between Shane Burgos and Edson Barboza, I just want to see Giga Chikaze fight Edson Barboza. I don't care if he's mm. on a losing streak, a winning streak. Just make fight. it happen. The schedules line up, and it'll be just kicks like crazy, and I'm yes. all for it. Inject that in my veins. Like, I didn't know I needed that until you just said it. Yeah, that's Sign a Sign me up right now for yeah. that one. Uh, Ed, Ed, anything you want to add to, like, what, what do you think Giga does uh, in the featherweight division? I think he goes as far as he wants. I mean, you know, uh, picking up a win over somebody like Killer Cub. I mean, um, like any fighter, you get you get to, you go as far as you want. As far as his um, evolution 
in the in the the contender series loss that that Ben Hamin referenced. Um, I think uh, I think I think he has gotten better. I know they were making note of his takedown defense um, in his last few fights during the broadcast. Which is something that I always think. I mean, I, I always think any striker making the move into mixed martial arts, if they want to do well, as any martial artist knows, you want to make your opponent fight your fight. So by doing that, you shut off all the other things they're good at, and you can and make them fight where you where you're good. And um, I think if he does that, he can go as far as he wants. Absolutely, absolutely. All right, fellas, let's <clears throat> let's keep things moving here. We're gonna go to our eating crow segment. Um, break out your seasoned salt, your paprika. Um, butter, um, bacon soda, whatever you use to go ahead and fry bacon that up. Soda, bacon soda, bacon <laughs> soda. <laughs> I was hoping somebody would say that. Um, so we got, there were plenty of picks to get right and to get wrong over the last week in mixed martial arts. So, um, Ben, share with me one reason why you might be eating krill this week. I did pretty well on the picks overall this week. I, I mean, I did benefit from a couple of sketchy decisions. I won't go into that. I'll, I'll take those <laughs> wins any way I can get them. But I picked the uh, Luana Carolina versus Poliana Botelho fight wrong. I mean, to my mind, uh, Carolina was one of the lower level flyweights the UFC has ever signed. That, I mean, just point blank. Like, you know, uh, she got in through a eh, decent performance on Dana White's Contender Series Brazil. She beat Priscilla Cachoeira, who I still believe is probably the worst uh, flyweight the UFC has ever signed you know, lost to Lipsky. I just, I don't know if Poliana Botelio is a future top 10 flyweight, but I pretty firmly believe that she is UFC level. And I wasn't sure that Carolina was, but aside from the fact that she missed weight, Carolina looked good. I like she, she is. And again, ironic to say, considering she missed weight, but she is a big physical, strong athletic flyweight. Uh, she really is just a very short distance into her career at this point. She hasn't fought high level fighters really until until two fights ago like ariani lipsky yeah. was the best fighter she had fought up to that point and poliana botelio is probably now the the best fighter she's beaten she's she's improving and you know as a 27 year old still with under 10 fights to her name i probably wrote her off a little too soon so yeah i mean get the weight under control and uh keep improving and who knows maybe luana carlina sticks around i will take a slightly heavy portion of crow <laughs> All right, Ed. Why are you eating crow this week? Well, we just talked about it. I had a uh, uh, Cub Swanson. Not only did I pick him to win by uh, knockout, but uh, I put money on it for him to win that way. It was plus seven hundred on DraftKings mm -hmm. if he uh, if he won that way. And then uh, you know there, there there goes my money. Not only so I'm eating crow and I'm a little more broke because of it. But yeah, I mean, listen. Uh, I mean, I, I'm gonna touch more on that fight a little bit later because i think it's one of our right did i make it I, I know i have a note about a couple of things on here oh no this is it yep this is because it. yeah this is the one because uh so cub swanson was always the guy that the, the to me that it seemed like the ufc was trying to use him as that like like a uh, gatekeeper or whatever and i always think about i always think about when uh frankie edgar and yaya rodriguez fought when they when they thought they were serving up Frankie Edgar to him, and Frankie Edgar just dragged him for the whole fight and made him, you know, become the the guy that hardly fights that he is now, <laughs> and and now now now, so that's how I saw Cub, like the guy they keep trying to throw under the bus, and I guess uh, Chikadze just had what it what it took. I mean, not for nothing, like liver liver shots like that, you know, if you get caught with them, it happens. Now, I don't care how long you've been fighting, they they still come your way if they're set up right, and which Chikadze did, but. I'm eating crow because I lost money and and, and uh, my my fandom took more than you know I, I didn't do any analysis I was just like stop trying to throw a cub under the bus fuck all y'all for, for that so. and <laughs> hey, hey, you got a point there because it seemed like they they've been trying to uh, get cub up out of there for a minute oh yeah like, yeah they and and he he's turned a few of them away man like yeah. they really thought it was going to be Cron Gracie and then it yes. was going to be Pineda yeah so yeah, yeah. Def definitely good point there Jay why are you eating crow this week. Well, I'm eating crow because of the other Luana. Now, I knew that Luana Pinheiro had some skills, but I hadn't seen her. Ooh, God, this is tough to say because Randa Marcos is 500, but against solid, resolute competition. Uh, basically, all of the people that she had fought 
are around the 500 mark. Uh, when she when she came up through Brave, uh, when she was in Contender Series, when they brought up Stephanie Frausto, which I'm still surprised that they put in Stephanie Frausto for the Contender Series with a record of like eight and six or something, with hopes that she would become a contender. I don't want to rip on her too much because, you know, she's not in the UFC, but... I had Randa Marcos doing that savvy veteran thing. I'm not going to fall for your nonsense. I'm not going to fall into an arm bar. I'm not going to wade into your guard and look around and look at my coach and then go, oh, crap, he just tapped me out. I'm not. I, I, I thought that she would be able to get over that. And she got poked three times in the eye. And, and that that stinks. Uh, she did get stitches and she did reportedly have vision problems. So, you know. The, the whole, I think it was the second, the one that she, the doctor came in and then she, and they were like, she was saying, can I have more time? And the doctor's like, no, we need to know now. That felt like a fight ending poke mm. right there. Mm. And then Marcos went on her, on her back because Pinero was just ragdolling her, by the way, a thing I didn't quite see happening. Mm -hmm. uh, and then Randa Marcos landed the illegal up kicks. And I, you know, I just, there's a lot to unpack in this fight. I'm eating crow because I believe that Randa Marcos wouldn't be bullied and tossed like around like a toy. And that, that was the result. It isn't that she lost by DQ or it's her fourth loss in a row, or that she's now a literal 500 fighter with a, like a six and nine and one record in the EOC or anything. But, it looked like that moment, like the competition has passed her by and I didn't think that it would happen. Uh, but man, I'm going to derail this because I, I feel like we have to mention it. That upkick, the the result. I want to say something, and 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 it's going to be controversial because I heard a lot about it on the other side. I believe Luana Pinero was hurt, was hurt badly, maybe even flash knocked out when she was asking doctor or person nearby, "Did I lose?" Mm -hmm. When she was on the ground, fall flat on her back. Um, there were people criticizing the way she fell, the reaction, everything like that. I think she was, I think she got smoked. I yeah. actually think she was hurt. She was out, out of it. Uh, her eyes were wide open. They weren't yeah. just open. They were wide open. Like, oh my, oh my God. Like when you just wake up from a dream and you're like, oh, oh, oh what's happening? Mm -hmm. I, I think she was out and I disagree with people criticizing her. I think that that was, that should have been a DQ. It was the right call. And it was a big problem. Do you guys agree? Do you, do you think there was a, a fl some floppery going on? And I feel like he went away on this right off the bat. Well, the thing is, I... Oh, man. Is it because his little microphone disappeared? <laughs> no, because the way he was looking... Yeah, I was jittering. Yeah, 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 man. Lips, yeah he, like, he, knows, he knows the look when I'm about to go on a rant or something. <laughs> like, I, I'm trying to contain myself here because I, I don't want to speak out of turn. My initial impression was that was a, a superb acting job. That was my, my initial impression. Like, and, and I was one of the people criticizing the fall. Mm -hmm. Like the fall, the way she she broke her fall Raced was, and then went down. Yeah, was was like a very controlled fall. Like that that looked like a very, very controlled fall. Uh, I was unsure when when her eyes were that just wide open, whether it was her putting on or whether it was genuine. But the conclusion I've come to is that it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. It really doesn't matter whether she pretended or not. Um, if the idea is to win and you get paid double to win, <laughs> damn it, I'm going to take that win. Um, <laughs> I'm going to take that win like all day. I, I, I'm telling you, if, if so much as, as a, a gnat lands on my nose, while I'm a down fighter, oh, I'm falling out, baby. I'm falling out, and I'm <laughs> I'm seeing stars, Tweety Bird around my head, and all that shit, um, because I'm trying to get this double paycheck. Um, that that's the the most important agenda for me is to win and to get paid like I won. So I I mean I think the rule is stupid. The rule is really stupid because it it's not in the spirit of hitting a downed opponent if you're both on the floor especially if you're the fighter on top you're the one who's not in the real danger of the real dangers of kicking a downed opponent so the rule is stupid but it's still a rule and if you land an illegal blow there should be consequences and these are the consequences for random marcos i'm okay with it yeah i was uh i actually i i side with jay on that one too i'm, I'm literally on the same page with you especially when she asked what uh when she asked if I lost, yeah, that's the that's what made me be like, oh man, this chick is this chick is done. And then I uh rewatching it 
doing my video Sunday video thing I do for MMA news. I played it along on that and was rewatching it there. And I was just like, yeah, she's, she just didn't seem like she was there for me. But um, I mean, I mean, I, I see, I see the, the, the whole Buster Douglas method working too, to try to take some, like, I can see the, I can see both sides of it, but like, like, obviously you heard what I heard when she asked if she, when she asked if she lost, that's when I was just like, no, nah, she, she's not asking that because she was thinking about throwing this, you know, away. Yeah. So. Take us home, Duffy. I haven't rewatched it yet. In the moment, it looked as though, I mean, it looked very uh, soccer reminiscent. Uh, but ultimately, <laughs> it doesn't matter and it shouldn't matter. It's the same thing as the Jan Sterling fight. Yeah. Like if if a illegal strike has happened and it was significant, mm. it, it shouldn't be in the hands of, or in it shouldn't be up to the fighter who was fouled to determine the punishment. Like, it shouldn't even be a question of, can you continue? Like, if the ref decides that that was significant, it's over and it's a DQ. Right. Like, to do otherwise, like, only brings, the, like, it only adds incentive for fighters to, <laughs> to oversell it and, and flop and, and act like they were fouled worse than, the, than they were. I mean, I agree with Ant that the rule is stupid, but it, if the rule is what it is and, you know the rule were being enforced consistently and ethically, it would have been just fine with me if uh, Pinero had gotten up and done like a little Mexican hat dance as soon as the foul landed. Nah, 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 I fucking beat you because you <laughs> oh, landed. Don't start. I'll start game. dancing right now. Yeah, we'll like, like who, who, like it doesn't, it, it shouldn't <laughs> matter. Like if the, if it was, if it was, if it was hard enough to, to like have an impact, then it it's no longer a, a matter of the, you know, the the fighters like the effects on the fighter or their ability to re to recover it shouldn't be on them uh definitely definitely good points there gentlemen so let's let's keep things pushing i mean hang I, on, oh, hang yeah, on. yeah yeah I want, I want you to eat some crow now pal oh me oh um well i mean my my crow was really coming from the main event i i, I picked dominic reyes to win this and i know a lot of people are high on on your Prochaska for good reason but i just felt like uh reyes was the more proven commodity coming in um, looking at their resumes and, and the competition they had fought leading up to that moment. I just thought more Reyes's resume and including, you know, a losing effort to John Jones. I, I just thought a lot more of that and, and figured he might he he might be able to um, uh, it, it still. I and mean, he'd look good. It just didn't go his way. Yuri is just a freak of nature. So there, there's that. I'll eat that crow all day long. Um, but it'd be curious when we're eating crow when Yuri makes good on his title shot. Like who who's gonna be eating crow on that one? That's that's what I'm really interested in. Mm -hmm. All right, fellas. So let's move things along here um to uh, another chapter of regrettable fuckery in the sport of mixed <laughs> martial arts. Diego Sanchez, um tough one winner, the original ultimate fighter, uh he has now been cut from the UFC. A a video surfaced shortly after it was announced that he was ruled out of the fight against uh, Donald Cerrone. And this video surfaced um, courtesy of his much uh, beloved uh, new coach, manager, slash self-help guru, or whatever the hell this guy is, uh, Josh Fabia. And it's, it, it's taking a lot of me to not just call him Johnny Tapia because that's the first name that, that comes to mind. Um, this, this buffoon. But anyway, there was a video of him like arguing with Megan O'Leary and Everybody. Paul Felder <laughs> and John Anik and pretty much everyone, yeah. uh, uh, anyone on camera for the UFC yeah. about God knows what. And, and now this is um, then the, the result. Diego Sanchez no longer a UFC fighter. I mean, this is just a, an overall very bizarre story. Beyond the, the personalities involved, um, there's been talk of uh, medical records that have been denied from Sanchez. And I, I don't know what to make of this mess. Uh, fellas, I want to get your takes on this. What what do you make of this whole situation? There's There's so, so much to unpack. And I feel like every bit of it is sad. Like there, there's not a happy ending to the story because I feel he's going to end up fighting with David Feldman uh, in BKFC and, and, and taking on a Leonard Garcia, Joe uh, Elmore type with bare knuckle, because that's how these things happen. Diego 
for worse or for worse, hitched his wagon to the Josh Fabia train. And this guy, I, I mean, Rashad Evans said it better than I could when he said that he's the baby is a parasite uh, just because of how he has treated Diego and dragged mm-hmm. him along and, and kind of convinced him and, and, and brainwashed him, whatever the words that have been said about him, uh, those are not my words. Those are words by professionals that have said this about a coach they've interacted with. Um, but personally, the guy is a charlatan. And I know that because uh, he identifies himself as not only having, oh, wait, he hasn't served in the military, but he has been certified in certain military styles and setups. I'm going to go on record. <laughs> I, I, I'm, not, I'm not a veteran. I've never served in the U.S. Armed Forces. But you don't just show up at a seminar and go, hi, I'd like to join, you know, oh, I had the army had a half day. You know, it's just there, there, there's no such thing. And and to to laud your credentials as whatever he says, he's a breathing expert, which I don't know if that has any credentials. I mean, maybe Wim Hof has something that he can give a certificate or something like that. But like he claims to be a martial artist, but he doesn't have any martial arts training or experience. If you're a black belt, Say you're a black belt in something. If you're a belt of some sort, if you have an accomplishment, an achievement, if you participate in the tournaments, you don't just say, I'm a martial artist or I'm certified in martial arts. There's no, that's not, that's not a thing. I'm just, just putting it out there. It's nonsense. It's smoke and mirrors. And the other thing I want to mention um, is actually a legal issue uh, in that uh, Josh Fabia taped UFC lawyer mm-hmm. uh, Hunter Campbell. Uh, on the phone, they had a phone conversation. He released that too. Yeah. Well, here's the thing. Nevada is what is called a two-party consent state in certain instances. What that means, if you're recording a conversation uh, and you're in person or like this, like we are now, I only one person has to be has to be consented to recording this. If I'm calling you, both parties have to be notified that you're recording the call and and and, and accept this. I can, I would put all the money I would take, I would take Ed's <laughs> money that he blew on Cub Swanson and we'll put get it to his house before Jesse Cofield gets and, there to take and it. <laughs> put it and put it all on the fact that there is no way that a UFC attorney consented to being recorded about mm-hmm. medical information and conversations. No, that's, there's no <laughs> such thing. So there's a legal issue that releasing these tapes are going to get out. And, yeah. and I know the UFC has a few petty weight contenders in the ranks there th- th- that are fairly litigious. I cannot imagine Fabia is going to get out. Okay. Just with that alone. It's just, Oh, Diego. Yeah. I, I, I wish this, I wish we had the Diego that he was talking about a cube because then at least that Diego is out of his mind, but he's not out of his mind with a cult leader by his side. <laughs> hey, um, hey, forgive me for, for jumping out of turn here, I'm but I, I just feel compelled to say something. Um, so I, for some reason, like I, it, this really, this really bothered me a lot. Like now <laughs> beyond, beyond the UFC's part in this, as far as not giving him his medical records, if that's, yeah. if that's a, a story to be believed or whatever, whatever the case may be on that, the UFC is certainly not innocent in, in any of this. I, I'm, I'm certain of that. <laughs> However, as far as, uh, Fabia is concerned. So I, I've interacted with Diego Sanchez a couple of times. Um, it uh, around UFC 235 and 239 uh, media days and fight weeks and stuff. Got to interview him a few times, and one of those in particular, I want to say it was the fight week of 235, was probably the most in-depth conversation that I had with him. And he was definitely in a very dark place. Like he was clearly not a happy person. He. Um, I think he was he was talk he was talking to me about his divorce. He's talking to me about mm-hmm. um like feeling like he was losing his family and he just it it this this energy off him like he had sunglasses on but I'm sure if he had those sunglasses off he probably would have burst out into tears. Like mm-hmm. I I could feel the sadness on to the to the point where when I walked away um he got up and approached me and and like thanked me for like doing a good job interviewing him or something and then like gave me a hug. And I could feel like like this guy this guy was hurting, um, and to know that 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 Fabia came around that time, mm. and yeah, and really preyed on someone who, at least from my estimation, was incredibly vulnerable. Yeah, I mean it's sickening. It's really sickening. 
I would, you know, and this is, I'm not Diego Sanchez's friend. I'm not, you know, I'm not like a, a, a companion of his or anything like that. So maybe, maybe I'm, maybe I'm taking this a, a little bit too personally, but mm. I just don't like bullies. I don't like people taking advantage uh, of those who are vulnerable. Yeah. I put this on record. I would fuck Fabia up. Mm-hmm. I would fuck up Fabia. And I hope he hears this Fabia. Let's get it on. I would fight you. I would beat the shit out of you and it would be a marvelous time. So come get this work, bro. Like taking advantage of people under the name of martial arts, under the guise of martial arts. No, nah, not nah, fam. It it's done too much good uh, for people's lives for you to perverse it, to pervert yeah. it in that man, in that manner, especially to a pioneer, like a guy who has literally put his life on the line and like lost his family and, mm-hmm. and, and lost his way in life in, in some respects because of it. Nah, fam. Like you gonna have to catch these hands. I I have no problem signing on that dotted line. I will beat the shit out of Josh Fabia. Mark my words. Now, please, gentlemen, floor is yours. <laughs> you might have to get in line there, pal. There are yeah. a lot of pro fighters that are gunning for this guy. You no, I know? mean, he's not a real martial artist. So, no, like, hey, no. take take a guy who's never had a fight. I've never had a fight. I will yeah. beat the shit out of you, Fabia. You have to wonder though, how good is his finesse that he's at this level? getting guys to to come and take his classes and train them we saw all the footage of him chasing people around yeah like 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 what's well is he is he on the level of what's his name from the freaking for what's the guy with the the sunglasses like steven seagal or something yeah no like like his uh his way of uh, controlling folks oh oh oh, uh, um the 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 dude from uh, napoleon dynamite with the (laughs) the american flag pants no i'm talking real i'm talking real (laughs) real cult leaders guy with the sunglasses oh oh david koresh David Koresh, like, is he on the level yeah. of David Koresh and all those guys? Uh, like, I, I'm just wondering, like, what did you do? What did you do to make make get that type of control over the poor guy? What to, I mean, I know you. I didn't know that he was going through that much around that time, around the same time. So it makes sense that that would happen. But um, one of the things, you know, as as an older person that that teaches martial arts now, you know, you. you you never make it. Look at all the great the of the year coaches that that get nominated. You never hear anything from them, or or bear, you, you're lucky if you see them in a, doing do an interview or something because they make with their focus about the person that they're trying to help. You know the the younger, more athletic, the the you know person that's supposed to be. If you're about Diego, then then step like that whole video interview. Where he steps in at Abu Dhabi, like, like I mean, Felder was the only one that was ready to tell him to get the fuck out, like, get the fuck out of here, bro. But then, um, the other thing I wanted to point out was that 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 video, the the audio of the recording that Jay was referring to, isn't it funny how Fabia changed his tune as soon as as soon as Hunter was like, "We got to cut you if that's the case," and then you could you could literally hear uh, Fabia start start to <laughs> reel it back and be like, "Yo, no, no." Well, yeah, cool. Whatever you want is cool. Now, whatever we want is cool because yeah. you just found out you got your boy's job lost. Yeah. So, so it's like, and and I don't know why that hasn't clicked with Diego yet. I mean, I I don't know. I mean, like, I just feel bad for the guy where he winds up. I know that's one of the things we're supposed to address. I would prefer he go maybe competitive grappling is a little bit more. I'd be okay. You know, with that. Mm-hmm. you know what I mean. It's safer for him. It's something he did before he got to the Ultimate mm-hmm. Fighter. You, I know he did a bunch of Grappler's Quest and stuff like that, which shout out to Grappler's Quest. I competed in it's not around anymore. That's how old I am. But you know, <laughs> but you know what I mean? Like, like it's it's a uh, it, it's it's where I hope he winds up, but wherever he winds up, even if it's BKFC, get the fuck away from that dude. That guy's that guy's literally poison. I don't even know, uh, like I said, uh, Mc, uh, McDojo life or whatever. Somebody needs to do an in-depth thing on him to find out how how the the hell he got to finesse so many people to to make money like that you know it's just yeah. crazy and just it's, like the the videos just goofy shit like chasing oh. people around the cage with a knife and then uh, oh everything's the knife dodge the knife and people are waving their hands at each other and 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 slipping so-called knife strikes like it's silly like and this is you're talking to a guy who's trained in krav maga like i've i've trained in like the the weapon defenses yeah. and all that stuff and kind of know the limitations of that and know mm-hmm. like what yeah. what might kind of maybe work in a situation and what is complete bullshit is and and that was complete bullshit is, <laughs> is, was uh, easily is, bull, bullshit. is bull still around 
or are they um, going? Bull, Bullshito? I want. I don't know. I haven't seen them man, on Instagram. They could really they still, they still exist. This oh, is, okay. Somebody, oh. somebody needs to do something yeah. to that guy because I, I mean, I would love to expose him uh, in, in a cage or a ring. I, I would, I would love that opportunity. So, yes, please, somebody. I mean, Di- Diego was like, hit me one, up. Of, one of the things Diego said, like when they were, he was asked about, it, I remember was like, oh, uh, that we rolled together once, and he took my back, like you. Your backs get taken. Like sometimes you get <laughs> taken by surprise by a younger dude. I got a, a a a kid, nineteen years old, who wrestled. Whatever he took my back. I mean, he didn't get me anything, but he took my backs get taken. Sometimes it happens. That that's no way to. That doesn't mean I want the kid to coach me now. Yeah, yeah. You, know? you can accidentally take a back. Like you can. <laughs> like and and you're talking to someone who is not. I'm not a. I'm not a good grappler necessarily. Like I've. I've accidentally gotten myself into good positions. I've accidentally <laughs> gotten. I'm like, oh shit, there's a Darce and, and like, <laughs> lock it up. Like I've done that before. Um, so this this is not that spectacular. Um, yeah, this is this is someone who preyed upon a vulnerable man who was in a dark time in his life, and that's really disgusting. No. Yeah. yeah. No, and all and, and the cool thing is everybody on this panel could beat the shit out of him. <laughs> and he looks and he just. <laughs> He just comes off like a real, like a real fucking, like, like just a lion ass fucking. Like, yeah, I'm sorry to a, curse so much, but just, it's just a clown. Like, yeah, oh, you like, curse like all, you curse all the fuck you Matt, want on this Matt, show. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Matt, Matt Sarah's interaction with him was so relatable to me <laughs> because, because obviously, I mean, uh, you know, I, I train with one of Matt Sarah's black belts, and and I'm just, I'm just somebody that that literally, you, you could, you could, you could hear because I've been there. You could hear Matt Sarah's voice, him talking himself out of just snatching the dude up and being like, "Yo, like, <laughs> like when he says to him, he's like, he's like, this is not gonna end. This is not gonna end good for you. Like those words have come out of everybody in the Northeast mouth at some point <laughs> when when they're when you're trying to let somebody know we're almost there, dude. If it goes there, cops, ambulance, all that stuff's coming, you know. So, I mean, is it safe to say that the whole Josh Fabia thing would not have happened in the tri-state area? Like somebody would have slapped oh, the taste out of his mouth. He would he would have gotten he beat got to this down. Point. Yeah. Nah, yeah. Like yeah, you couldn't get away with that on on nah, the East Coast for you can't sure. Even, not even in Greenpoint the, or, or Williamsburg. I mean that there's a level of of ridiculousness that goes on there. You know, there's dudes walking around dressed like Mad Hatters and and Spider Man and, and you know just as their regular clothes, and still that shit won't fly. Still that shit won't fly. It's it's <laughs> yeah. It's like the, the way the way he approaches is just so crazy. It's just it's so devoid of the reality of what's going on. And, and like this, this sort of this arrogance uh, around him that is just it would get you slapped in, in in most circles of of real people who actually know what to do with their hands and feet. Yeah, like they you were done with the interview, up. that Abu Dhabi video. They were done with the interview. Diego's sitting on the table that's meant for him. You're off to the side somewhere, and he literally stood up and inserted himself and started yep. some whole shit when the interview was done. Get out of here with that. And he had Stefan Bonner record. Like knowing we were gonna get him for this, another like that, one. That that's, was the, yeah, <laughs> yeah, another uh, Stephen Bonner, another another guy who clearly who clearly needs some help. Um, yeah, man, is this this whole the situation is is silly, um, silly as hell. Like I don't even know what to say. I just want to slap the shit out of Fabia. That's that's really the only takeaway I, I have from this. So, um, yeah, DMs are open. Make it happen. All right, fellas, um, let's move things along here. The Bellator Light Heavyweight Tournament uh, rages on without one key component. That is Yoel Romero failed a medical and is now ruled out uh, apparently something with his eye. So, fellas, um, are we still excited about the Light Heavyweight Grand Prix? I'll I'll take this one real quick. Hold on. Go for it. (laughs) <laughs> you, you, you're not excited to see anthony johnson fight some cab driver they found uh, it's, it's the a, other day it's a guy who who tapped out jonathan wilson the other day so at least he fought on bellator recently um but it's this is this is all the makings of a setup and losing romero it's weird romero's like 43 and i wasn't really that excited about you know what's he gonna do at light heavyweight first time since what phase Zhao back in strike forces and he's been at 205 so who knows what's gonna happen but it still stings. Like I still like, yay, Ryan Bader versus Corey Anderson. Yay, Vadim Nemkov versus Ryan Bader too. Yay. I don't know. I'm just I'm I'm good. 
I'm, I, that's all I have to say. I'm <laughs> sorry. Yeah, I was I was hitting the wrong button. Sorry. Um, <laughs> uh, and ben, um, you, you still excited about this Grand Prix? Yeah, I'm on the opposite side of this than Jay is because that was the uh, quarterfinal that I was least excited about anyway. It's the one I thought yielded the least, uh, right. the least probability of yielding a finalist. And it's the one that felt most like a Bellator matchup. Like, I, I don't mind it being gone. Mm. Uh, I have to say I'm a little surprised that someone managed to fail a medical in the promotion that put Kimbo and Dada in the cage together. Mm. Like, what does that take? But, mm. you know, uh, yeah, I, I like... I don't really care about, I didn't care about that match anyway, except as pure spectacle. So, you know, like, uh, I, I want to see Anthony Johnson in the next round and now it looks very likely that I will. <laughs> it's, it's so funny, Duffy, because I, that was also, this was my fight. Like, I don't care about it. It's going to be nonsense. It's going to be stupid. It's just going to be guys walking and throwing bombs. Mm. And yet now I feel like a little part of me is gone for some messed up reason. <laughs> That's because you're a messed up person. That's I why. am a messed up person. I'm excited for Fight Circus 3 in a couple of weeks. So what are you going to yeah. do? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We're all yeah. excited for that. Um, so, so Ed, what, are you still enthused about this, or were you not enthused in the first place? Where, where are your, your feelings hey, right now? Listen, I'm I'm never shy about. It. I like Bellator. I love all this. I love crazy, stupid, fun, whatever the hell you want to call it. <laughs> I like this. I, I like what they do, and I like I like I like the tournaments. You know what I'm saying? So, so I, I mean. Missing that fight it bothers me. Like 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 Jay says, it's it's it, I'm like oh man, but as long as it keeps going, I like tournaments and and I wish the UFC would do more tournaments. Um, I love the whole PFL format. So I've always been, you know I've been adamant, uh, vocal about that, and anywhere I talk about it. So, um, but yeah, I mean I, I like it, man. As long as they keep doing something different than what the UFC, I, li I like I like I like the change. I like the differences. Sad that you all hope you hopefully you all's all right and we get to see him do something. If not, you know, 43 is old for fighting anyway. But um, whatever he's got to do, you know, I I, I definitely um, I'm, ha I'm I'm excited for it either way. So you're saying you're excited to see El Romero in Mississippi and Biloxi in like two and a half months uh, with with Bare Knuckle FC. I think that's what you're saying, right? No, I don't want him to do that. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't want him to do that. <laughs> Well, I've, I've got a question for you guys uh, related to this, and I'm, I'm going to borrow from a friend of the show, Trent Ryan Smith, his uh, a take that he had on Twitter that had me thinking. Now, the UFC just released Yoel Romero. Oh, yeah. Uh, just released him. Um, they have a lot of their fighters go through the PI. They're, there's mm. a situation about Diego Sanchez and his medicals and his mm. release now. Do, do you think inside information – is uh letting UFC let go of particular individuals? Well, well, if you remember the last time you guys had me on, I had asked the question: um, Are they now because of them saying they were going to cut the roster? Are they just making it easier for for them to, you know, it used to not be so 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 simple to get out of the UFC, but now I mean we saw these string of like look at where we're, we're doing and Pettis and all these guys. I think um, if if something pops up that makes it puts a question mark on a guy's little dossier that they have at the UFC offices, they'll be like, "Hey, we got to cut fighters anyway." There you go, go on. So that's that's where I'm at. I think I think Ed's right. I mean, you think of the fighters that have have left the UFC, the name fighters that have left the UFC as of late. I can't think of many of them that have fared well, other than Corey Anderson, but he wasn't let go in that sense. He we were the he was a free agent. But yeah, think of think of guys, John Lineker. Um, there have been questions about his medicals um, and and oh. weight and internal issues, <laughs> and mm -hmm. and um, and the other five, Anthony Pettis. Yeah, and Pettis they, just they, losing. Yep. And yeah, I, I yeah. feel like I, I I it's funny. It's you look at them and you question the result and you go, mm -hmm. are, are you sure this is a good release? And then you realize what's happening afterwards. Like yeah. there are rumors and they are rumors, so I don't want to perpetuate them too much, mm -hmm. but I'll I'll mention them. Um, that Yo Romero may have a, a serious medical condition or have had a serious medical condition that that led to an eye issue. Is it monstrosity that no. he's just a monster? <laughs> no, no, it, <laughs> no, it no, was, no. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I'm joking. Uh, I'm I'm joking, <laughs> but but really quick, uh, uh, just to add to everything else I said about the question marks. Don't forget they they went, Endeavor went public last Thursday too. 
True. So when it, when a company goes public like that, I know that's just right now. I, I looked there at they're trading at twenty nine and change a share. When I looked this morning, I don't know what, what it closed that. Um, but I also think now that they've got they're publicly traded, um, you're we're start we're probably gonna maybe five years down the road. I wouldn't be surprised if there's a if uh, like with Al Act and all this stuff that's happening. You know what I mean? Like like now they have to start making themselves look like they're not monopolizing anything or, or anything like that. So I think all of this is just a long game of, you know, let's clean up, let's clean it up. We can't, we, we, we've, we got where we wanted the first 25, 26, 27 years. Now we got to start cleaning it up, especially with everything going on, especially well, what's this night? Uh, Ari Emanuel couldn't even remember the name of Whaley, Whaley's name when he, when he did that interview with Cheddar or whoever. So I'm, I'm just, I go I'm, on forever, but <laughs> I'm and I'm with Ed on this one. This is the kind of situation where I hope in a few years we won't even have to be asking these questions. Yeah. But right now, the way the sport is structured, there's just no such protections in the place for the fighters or for the promotions. Like if the you know, if the Cowboys trade someone to the Giants and that person doesn't pass medicals when they get to New York, you know, the trade is voided. There's mm -hmm. there's a protection in place. Yeah. There's no such thing here because you know they aren't employees, there's no real relationship between any of the leagues that are de facto franchises uh so yeah we we find ourselves asking asking these questions and it's it's unfortunate it does no one good except for the bag holders at the ufc mm -hmm. yeah and i'm i'm just amazed too that like that this late in the game like he fails a medical like you've signed the contract you're booked for a fight like shouldn't you already have a general picture of someone's health before those steps are followed through mm -hmm. just you know like to sign the contract for the contract to be valid shouldn't you have to pass a physical seems pretty basic and if you're going to if you're going to fight in a sanctioned territory like you've got to get licensed so you probably should have that license before the fight is booked i, I you know just some of these things just I, I i don't know and and if something drastic changes in between then okay you know when something happened and you can kind of pinpoint what the real health issue is i i don't know what do i know i'm just i'm just a guy with a, a green star wars shirt because by the time you're watching this it'll be may 4th so that that's all um <laughs> hi nice <laughs> All right, Good. fellas. So let's move on to the greatest title segment in all of yeah. media history. I'm not surprised, Mr. Falcons. This is where we share something that surprised us or ironically did not over the past week. Ben, I will start with you. What's your I'm not surprised, Mr. Falcons moment? Well, uh, UFC on ESPN 23, UFC Vegas 25 this past weekend. Uh, it had what my uh, preview and recap uh, co-host called it it, it it featured everything I hate about MMA in like the first three quarters of the card. Like there were, you know, bad decisions, what, disqualifications, black people? <laughs> uh, you know, bad decisions, disqualifications, uh, you know, weight misses that probably affected the outcome of the fight. But it's one of those weight misses I wanted to talk about because uh, Jonathan Pierce did legitimately surprise me by saying, no, my scheduled opponents, uh, Gabriel Benitez missed weight by like five pounds. I did the professional thing. I showed up on weight. I'm not going to reward him for, you know, not doing the, the professional thing. It's sad that it surprises me anytime that happens in the UFC. Like it, I understand why it surprises me. And now I'm looking forward to, well, when does the retaliation come? Are we going to see Jonathan Pierce? Hey, you know, I don't I'm not calling him a future title contender, but a decent prospect. You know, one of the more interesting featherweights to come out of the contender series in the last year or so. Is he going to get cut the next time he loses a fight? Like, is he going to get the Leslie Smith treatment? And obviously the UFC hated Leslie for a bunch of different reasons, like talking mm -hmm. about organizing and refusing mm -hmm. to fight a, an opponent mm -hmm. who misses weight are pretty much the two kisses of death to them. But I mean, I think the UFC is actually more mad at the fighter who refuses to take the fight than the one who misses weight. You can miss weight multiple times mm -hmm. and still stick around the UFC. Like, I don't think a fighter could refuse to fight an overweight opponent more than once and, and stick around. And that is ridiculous. It's backwards. It's bad for the fighters. It's bad for the sport. It's arguably unsafe because you're incentivizing 
incentivizing fighters either to fight someone who is too heavy for them or to do even unhealthier things to make weight. Like it's, it's just, it's a bad situation all around. And I mean, I, I always hesitate to call someone brave just for like doing their job and doing the right thing, but Pierce is doing the right thing. And I hope it doesn't come back to bite him. I would like him still to be in the UFC a year from now, or if he's out just because it's just because he lost a bunch of fights because that happens. That's my moment. That um yeah it's 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 pretty shameful that that has to be a, a surprising moment someone you know being responsible with their career um Ed what's your I'm not surprised Mr Falcon's moment this week uh I guess I mean the one I I picked when when uh, you sent me the questions was uh the one on on TNT's Eddie Alvarez's uh, Eddie Alvarez's appearance um I don't know I don't know I don't I, I really don't know what. I don't know what one was trying. I mean, I know they want to get U.S. audiences paying, you know, like new new eyeballs from here paying more attention to them. Because yep. obviously we four know about them. We've been knowing about them since they were one uh, one FC and then changed to one championships. And um, but um, the whole just the interactions and stuff like that from the press conferences, everything with Eddie Alvarez, Chatri, and and the DQ, and then getting that overturned, and then him him fighting, and I mean a fight that I thought. He won, and still making him mark uh, the loser of that. I was just like, like I said, I, I they've always kind of tried to say we're, m- m- you know, downplay either. I don't know if it's U.S. MMA or just the UFC, but I wasn't surprised to see any of those weird things happen like that. Um, I, as much as I, I like the I like the one championship belt. I think it's a really good looking belt, but. I don't uh, as much as and and a lot of their fighters that don't get that aren't at that popular to the to the casual fight fan, but um, I feel like this this April experiment, you know, went south, and I, I'm not surprised that it that if it that's the case. Mm-hmm. Breaking news: One championship is screwing up. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Jay, what what's your I'm not surprised, Mr. Falcons moment this week? That one championship is screwing up. <laughs> and it's not about and it's not about what I was raging about last week. It's a different situation. I can't I can't quit you, one intern. I know you're watching. Hey, how you doing? Hope you're having a wonderful day. Um, but I'm about to trash on one championship for decisions that one championship made. It isn't the Rugrug thing, which by the way, oh my god. Um, mm-hmm. it's actually a decision that one decided to make to release its schedule for its upcoming events. And there's a couple things they did. Uh one one has been doing tape delays um, to to fill up the theory because we don't know officially is to fill out broadcast cards for 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 event obligations like kind of how the UFC will have to churn out tons of ESPN cards and by God Anthony Smith is going to fight Devin Clark because we have to have a fight card happen uh, like this weekend it has a weird thing going on there too so one championship um, to. A lot of these fights happened a long time ago. All the fights that you will see in this upcoming card happened the night the one TNT four. So Rue Rug and Eddie losing and all that kind of these fights already happened. Like Brandon Brandon Vera's defending against Arjun Buller uh in the heavyweight title. And the problem is is that one championship to be able to do this, this is a peek behind the curtain here, to be able to do this for record-keeping purposes because tape delay means the fights didn't happen live, so who knows what happens in the process. Uh, fights can be withheld, edited, altered, all kinds of things can and have happened in this sport. Um, and, and and one championship has to account for what's going to happen. Okay, this is what fights are going to be held uh, and this is what we're going to air. So one championship presents a lineup for this upcoming card called Dangal. I'm pronouncing it hopefully right. Um, and it's got six fights on it. And these six fights are almost completely different from the six fights that they claimed were going to take place in this event. So what you're going to see at this upcoming one championship event in May, and I think it's in almost two weeks or so, are, are fights that happen in February. February. It's mid-May by then that happens. Um, And these old fights are going to be happening because they just felt like putting it in. Uh, There's no accountability. Um, I've said this before and I'll say it again, where everything's made up and the points don't matter. And at this point, I'm not speaking any falsities. 
I'm not exaggerating any claims. I'm not, I'm not fabricating any details. These are exactly how it's happening. And one championship doesn't care. And that breaks my heart as, huh. as a, as a fight fan. Oh man. Yeah. One they they find a way every time. Um, <laughs> so, um, so my, I'm not surprised Mr. Falcon's moment. Just it's so much to choose from. I wasn't on last week. So it's like an overload of things from last week. Um, you know, John Jones leaving first round management comes to mind, but I'm, I think I'm going to go in another direction than I initially was going to go on. And that is in the direction of Endeavor's IPO that we did mention a bit earlier, because this is a, a serious, serious development. This is something that we've heard about happening for quite some time. And now, um, especially with Ari Emanuel's um, flip, um, uh, his, his messing up the, the name of the former strawweight champion. Now I'm thinking, like, was he the guy who Rogan referred to backstage um, at the Nunez and Rousey fight? Who didn't know who Amanda Nunes was? Is he is he the guy? He probably is the guy. Um, but anyway, yeah. I'm not surprised because we thought this was going to happen, and now it's finally happening. And as Ed said, there are implications for how um, the yeah. UFC is run. Um, and I guess there are going to be a lot of a uh, lot of people on MMA Twitter trying to buy their stake. Yeah, in, in, in the octagon. So have it, at it. It's just surprise. I mean, I was actually surprised they did that because you know investors are going to start if they catch wind of all this you know the the, uh, the ali act and and the Spe project spearhead and stuff like that people are going to start out looking for updates and stuff like that and that i feel like that's only going to set those those things in motion and i feel i'm just surprised that's why i think like maybe five ten years down the road i mean how old is dana white you know either way like he gets his cash bag and, and bounces with nothing happening to him if, if if they have to you know expand the ali act into the sport and stuff like that so yeah, you've uh, got to be a super fan that is wearing blinders to just jump right. into this IPO, like to to invest in this right now, yeah. because with all these I know spin, these plates spinning, <laughs> yeah, like I wouldn't touch it. Like I just straight no. up would not touch it with with the Aliac link because the, yeah. the UFC is profit like their, their profit margins are based on underpaying the fighters, and if that changes, listen, the whole the whole thing falls apart. So I, yeah. And your your shares, yeah, plummet it's, to nothing. So I, I don't want historically, it. Historically, MMA stocks that have been in the past, there are they even around now? No, they're not. Uh, do no. you remember what was it? it was called like Alliance MMA or something? It wasn't no. a no no relation to the 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 crew the dominant crews in Jeremy Stevens camp. I think it was Alliance MMA. They tried to go public and buy a bunch of organizations and died in about four I, months. I think IFL tried to do it too. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, and then even right now, I mean xfc their shares are like trading at 13 cents a share or something like that i bought five shares of it because 13 cents a share <laughs> <laughs> but i'm not buying no endeavor stock i mean knowing what i know I'm, yeah no. yep hard pass on that one all right fellas so i'm gonna set my timer mm -hmm. and we are gonna get into the speed bag this is where i'm going to oh man i, I moved this stuff on my phone i'm like trying to find the right app um here it is here it is there there we go there we go i just rearranged everything on my phone for for ease and i just made it harder on myself how's that you know that feeling so fellas you're gonna have 10 seconds to answer a few questions or will we? uh ben i will begin <laughs> with you uh is the beat magomed sheripov really done with the sport of mixed martial arts obviously it's pending his medical news over the next little bit but i'm believing he is not i think we'll see him again Jay, you know, I, I have to think this is more of a, a frustration announcement than an actual retirement of some sort. Uh, unless he's medically in trouble, I think he's back soon. Ed, only he knows. I'm not going to try to speculate on anybody's business. <laughs> oh, all right. Oh, well, left more time on the clock than I thought you had right there. <laughs> yeah, that's it. I was expecting like, no, just kidding. He's definitely yeah. coming back tomorrow. <laughs> all right, Jay, I'm going to start with you on this next question. Who looked more impressive at PFL two, uh, Roy McDonald or Ray Cooper the third? Dang, that's a really tough question. Mm -hmm. I'm going to say Ray Cooper because I'm I don't know him for his grappling, and he ran a train on whomever he fought. Ed, um, I call it a tie because both of them got first round subs. But Jay makes a good point that the takedown and stuff was a was a nice nice win for him. And Ben. 
I'm going to lean Rory because my biggest question going into that card was, does Rory McDonald still like hurting people? And he looked like he did. The mean streak was back. That's a dangerous man. <laughs> All right. And, Ed, I will start with you on the third and final question. With Conor McGregor selling his stake in Proper 12 for $600 million, will he fight again after the Poirier trilogy? Yes, I think he fights all the money fights left on his contract that he can get against the least damaging opponents, which means no Justin Gaethje. <laughs> oh, Jay. Going to reuse a classic. <laughs> <laughs> no, there's nothing left for him when he loses <laughs> Poirier again. Ben. I think he will. I, I think he'll he'll fight. It might not be right away, but he won't be able to stay away forever. All right. All right, fellas. So now I'm going to change the clock over to 30 seconds and I will answer all three questions in succession. The clock will begin after reading the first question. Is the beat Magomed Sharapov really done with the sport of MMA? No, he's just trying to chase Yaria Rodriguez and it has to happen outside of the UFC, apparently, because we don't deserve nice things. Um, I would say Roy McDonald looked more impressive to me. Uh, Ray Cooper did have a submission and we're not used to that, but it was just like superpower, just just strength stuff. And, and Roy, we questioned whether or not he was really motivated. And Connor fighting again after selling proper 12. I'm sure he will, but uh, we can question the level of motivation. We definitely can question the quality of opponents and the legitimacy of the fights themselves. All when right. he loses to Poirier for the second time, I just there's nothing left for him. I feel, but yeah, I, I mean, yeah, because at that point, at that point, you can wipe away any talk of of boxing Manny Pacquiao or any exactly. crazy stuff like that. I, I think he goes on the Paul brother circuit. Um, if if Ooh. anything, that's probably the more realistic thing. All right, Phil. So let's uh, wrap things up here. PFL is uh, back again this week. Uh, a couple of questions in this. Fabricio Verdum is making his debut in the promotion. Um, do you think at 43 years old, this man, former heavyweight champion of the UFC, can make an impact in that promotion? As long as he doesn't break a hip on the way out. Like I, <laughs> I mean, I mean, this is this is this is still a Verdum who is just as dangerous, basically, as he was before. I don't recall him him running into any issues when he tapped out alexander gustafson uh last mm -hmm. year in like what two and a half minutes or something like that mm -hmm. i i grapplers don't have the same issue i think as as strikers and hanum problema is just a really really tall guy with really really long legs now the thing that for doom can do is go hey you got really long legs it'd be a real shame if i took them out from under you uh yeah man for doom I don't know if he can go all the way, but this is a matchup that he likes. I have to think, right? Yeah, yeah, I, I, I'd agree with that. Um, and look at the experience level. I mean, a, a guy who's six and two fighting, mm -hmm. a former champion, and someone who has a has a case for uh, for being among the greatest heavyweights in the in the sport of MMA in, in the history. I, yeah, this this looks like something he's supposed to win. And speaking of someone supposed to win. Kayla Harrison, do, do we do we see her being dethroned at all Dude. this season? We certainly Kayla? don't see we certainly don't see her being dethroned this week. Uh, she is a twenty to one favorite over Ma yes. Mariana Moraes, yes. and it should be. You can argue it should be greater. Not only is Moraes a thoroughly mediocre fighter, she should be a flyweight. Yeah. I mean, she's she's typically a bantamweight, but she's a five foot four bantamweight with a little bit of a spare tire. I mean, mm -hmm. she has losses. Well, she, like she has tons of losses to flyweights: Vanessa Porto, Ariane Lipsky, uh, Jennifer Maya, Roxanne Modafferi. <laughs> Roxy knocked her out. <laughs> yeah, Roxanne Modafferi like beat the crap out of her. I mean, unless Kayla Harrison, you know, knock on wood, like has an aneurysm on the way to the cage. It is literally by whatever she wants. If she just wants to stretch out her striking game on a five foot four woman who's not a particularly good striker, mm -hmm. she can do that. She, I mean, she could probably beat her using nothing but her left hand. Just I'm going to jab you with my left hand for this whole fight, and and be fine. If she wants to show off her most extravagant judo throws that she's like never been able to use on camera before, <laughs> she she can do it. I it's this is a grotesque mismatch. The rest of the division they've put together for her has a little more to offer, but not a lot. It's a lot of Bantamweights that weren't even great Bantamweights. 
So, so you you don't believe Cindy Danois is gonna win it all? To fall back on. <laughs> all right, all right, Ed. Um, any anything from the the PFL card you want to highlight real quick before we move on? No, no. I mean, the, the thing about their format is, I mean, we saw it with the first event. You know, I mean, I know anything can happen in MMA, but I, it just seems like the PFL is the best place for. If anyone wants a chance at any sort of greatness and money, it seems in, in MMA right now, it seems like the best place to make it happen. And as far as Kayla goes, I don't. I, I think she's she's gonna do it just because she's in the uh, former Olympians are are built different than regular humans. And uh, for Fabricio, I mean, um, he could probably su sub his way at least to the quarterfinals or something, and then we'll see what happens. Uh, definitely, good points there. And also uh, important to note, uh, Justin Willis. Big Pretty, former UFC vet, is um, making his promotional debut. Um, Kamaru Usman's brother, uh, Muhammad, is on this card as well. So a few things to look out on the, the outskirts of, of the, the big time show. So um, should be should be worth checking out there. And, yeah, I'm, I'm always down for, for some good sanctioned fist fighting. All right. <laughs> so, of course, the UFC is back this Saturday. Uh, the main event, Michelle uh, Waterson will be taking on uh, Marina Rodriguez in the main event after we lost. Uh, what, what fight do we lose? Uh, Cerrone Sanchez. That wasn't the main event, was it? Mm -hmm. Dillashaw. No, it was Dillashaw. Oh, yeah, yeah, Dillashaw, yeah, but the, the cut. Uh, yeah, so, yeah, uh, yeah. yeah, Dillashaw, yeah. Sanhagen. We, we lost that. So, I mean, obviously not the strongest main event. I mean, Michelle Waterson has main evented a couple of cards before, but um, this clearly isn't what the UFC wanted in, in the, the top spot this Saturday. But I mean, what do you, what would you do with this card otherwise? Well, I'd like to break if, if we, if I can, I'd like to break a little news from maybe for you guys. I mean, this is, this is news that happened uh, at the start of the show is that the, the co-main event is official. Donald Cerrone, and I think Benjamin Duffy, of all people, might like this. Donald Cerrone is fighting Alex Morono. Like That's it. not a bad fight. I like That's it. That's not a bad fight at all. That's I like that for I, a main event. I I take issue with the main event fight of Rodriguez for Watterson for a few ways. No crazy MFA fans. I'm, I'm a WMMA guy like anybody else. It isn't about that. It's the fight is taking place on short notice, out of nowhere, at flyweight. So there is literally nothing to be gained by this fight by two top 10 straw weights mm. fighting each other at 125. So it's, it's there, there's nothing there. There's no stakes. Like there's no takeaway. The UFC will treat it like it's a win in, in straw weight and advance the winner up towards title contention when it shouldn't be the case, but there's nothing to be learned by this. I'm more excited for, for, for Jeff Neal versus Neil Magny. I think that's my main. I would love to have seen that for five rounds, but I don't know if I'd get that far. Mm -hmm. uh, this card, were it not for the UFC announcing uh, tonight, or, or actually it wasn't UFC, but for the news of Cowboy versus Morono being announced, um, I was wondering if this fight this fight card might be postponed because I know Marina Rodriguez was having problems um, getting to Vegas, hmm. whether that's because she's in Brazil now or where she trains, I'm not sure, but there were quote logistical issues to get her to the apex. So that means the fight is happening. Um, tomorrow when you are all watching this, so it would be right now will be uh Tuesday and the fights are on Saturday. And unless there's a big news break between now and then there's still no official main event. It's what we know about is what we've heard, what Michelle Watterson mentioned, but things change so fast that who the hell knows? Well, I mean, the thing is in this in this era of the UFC, like you just keep going like oh, that's yeah. I mean, that that's really with the, the moral of the story that I think we all should have learned when the when they became the commission shop uh, through through the, the beginning of COVID-19 was that the show goes on no matter what, because mm -hmm. we need that money from ESPN. Yeah. Um, so and it doesn't and and we clearly see it does not matter who is in the main event it doesn't matter who's in the co-main event they're still going to get that same you know estimated what 10 million dollar check from espn regardless so mm -hmm. you just put on this event um however yeah. meaningless it's going to be in the long scheme of things and you take that money and yep. that's that's what's going to it's, it's just a conveyor belt of people mm -hmm. getting punched in the head yep. yeah so, 
That's actually my answer. You took my answer. I mean, <laughs> I, I wrote, I mean, I said like they just speed up the process so they can get it going. You know, who's left to headline logistically uh, outside of the two that you're already trying to get, do whatever you do, pull, you know, get, get, get the good old boys out there in Vegas to make stuff happen for you and do your, do what you got to do. But they're just going to, like you said, it's, it's a, it, they got a quota to keep. So, you know, it yeah, is and, what it is. And one thing, one thing that's like we, I mean, kind of in the media bubble, we kind of look at it as a bad thing. A lot of times I have all these cars because all of it blends in together and it just feels like just one continuous Saturday for the rest of our lives. <laughs> um, but but the advantage of it is for, for the fans perspective, um, having so many fights blend in, this is going to be a forgotten Saturday very soon. Like by by next Tuesday, we're going to forget that this card happened. We're going to totally forget about this card. I'm sure there'll be some great fights. There are some some notable names and some key matchups that we should be looking forward to. But we're not going to be thinking about this in the grand scheme of things. Mm -hmm. The train keeps rolling. So you can sneak in one that's subpar here and there or more so than not, more often than not, and get away with it. And everybody mm -hmm. gets paid still. Plus, and uh, we keep lining up back for more because we're suckers. Yeah, exactly. We're suckers. And, they and I mean, depending on who's watching but i'm the type of person that i'm like they can't all be ufc 261 you know like like you're gonna get some you're gonna get some uh, knockoff knockoff events here and there but like as long as they put them on like you said they keep up with their numbers and the hardcore ufc folks that watch nothing but ufc they're happy so that's all they need I will say one last thing real quick because it sounded like I was dumping on this card. I will say there are actually some legit matchups down on this card. This card looks to me, it feels like the last card when the main event you look at it and go, oh, wow, that's actually pretty good. Like uh, Amanda Hibas, uh, uh, Angela Hill, uh, Diego Fajeda, Gregor Gillespie. Um, I mean, you guys aren't excited, but I am personally re-excited for Rothwell versus Monstro Felipe Linz. What are you going to do? <laughs> this card... <laughs> <laughs> may may surprise yet i must say uh maurice green and marcos rodrigo de lima that's gonna be so bad it's good it like that's funny. that's that's gonna be pretty bad be just funny. so wonderful at the same time so it'll be the belly of ufc fights uh for <laughs> all you familiar with that film all right so um <laughs> That will do it for this edition of Unleashed. Uh, big thanks to Ed uh, for joining us. Welcome back anytime. Uh, we can't have this long of a stretch of time pass right. before we get you back on. So pleasure as always, my man. And you can check out his work on MMA News, my MMA News, Sure Dog. And what, what was the name of your your brand? Let's let's promote your brand. Oh, the podcast I do, uh, Coast to Coast Combat Hour. Coast to Coast me, Combat me and, a, and a fanboy maniac, Matt Hawkins. <laughs> All right, all right. Oh, Check know, that huh? out. Check that out. We'll, we'll put a link in the description, mm -hmm. so uh, so so we you you can uh, find Ed's Ed's brand right there. So Ben and Jay, you can find their work on Sherlock.com, and of course you can find me on MMA on Point and the Body Lock. So uh, like, subscribe, share, tell a friend to tell a friend, tell that friend to tell ten more friends. Until next week, stay beautiful, stay positive, and most of all, stay sexy. I'll see you when I see you. Peace. <laughs>